So how do we design microwave amplifiers? The first step you need to do is to choose a transistor, of course. There are a lot of transistors built for different applications. You want to choose a transistor that works in your uh, specified frequency with a certain S21 squared. So this is the insertion gain. Okay. And we also look if your transistor is unilateral. So if it's unilateral, then design, the design process can become easier. Right? So in most practical applications, a lot of transistors are actually unilateral. And so you have to choose a transistor within the frequency of your interest, let's say 2.4 gigahertz, which is a Wi-Fi frequency. Check if that transistor is unilateral for your design process to become easier. After that, you need to check your specified gain. Do you need the specified gain? What is the maximum gain? Can you achieve the specified gain given a maximum gain? And next is the stability of your amplifier, which we'll, we, we will talk about in the succeeding slides. Right? And other parameters, is it, do you want to have low noise, high bandwidth, larger power capacity, and so on and so forth. But the important ones are these. Okay, so first is the stability. So recall that your gamma out and gamma in are functions of ZL and ZS respectively. Okay, your amplifier will be unstable if gamma in or gamma out is greater than one. Why is this so? If you check this, uh, if you check this system right here, let's say you have gamma out, the magnitude of gamma out is greater than one. Then it, any wave reflected from ZL will be reflected back with a much larger amplitude and that will be reflected again and then will be reflected back with a larger amplitude and so on and so forth until your Reflection at this side becomes very large and now your transistor is unstable. So it's, it becomes very large, then that's, the, that's going to be a problem, right? Okay. So since your input and output reflection coefficients depend on the source and load matching networks, your stability now depends on gamma S and gamma L. Since your gamma N is a function of gamma L, and gamma out is a function of gamma s. Okay, so how do we check the stability? There are two types. It's either unstable or stable. Let's expand that. Unconditionally stable. It means that the transistor is stable for any passive loads. We characterize the passive loads to have a reflection coefficient of less than one. So for any passive load, you create an unconditionally stable circuit or, uh, yeah, unconditionally stable amplifier for any gamma S and gamma L less than 1. If the gamma in and gamma out are less than 1, it's conditionally stable or potentially unstable. If uh, your gamma in and gamma out is less than 1 for only a certain range. So, in, uh, in terms of frequency also, you have to check if your device is uh, stable. At different frequencies, your device can be potentially unstable, it can be unconditionally stable. So you need to map the entire scenario to be sure, but how do you map it? You use the Smith chart for, uh, graphical, for graphical aid using and plotting the stability circles. So the condition for stability, we plot all the possible values of gamma L and gamma S, such that gamma in and gamma out is less than one. Okay. So if the device is unilateral, S12 is zero, it's enough that S11 and S22 would be less than one to ensure stability. If gamma, uh, if S12 is zero, then 
your gamma in and gamma out will only be dependent on S11 and S22. They should just be less than 1 for to, to say that your transistor is stable. Okay. So first, derive the boundary of the stability circle. We let this uh, magnitude be equal to 1, as you see here. And we also define the parameter delta, which is the determinant of your S matrix. Okay, so that's what it says here. Okay, and it's equal to this. So consider first the load stability. We need an equation describing gamma L. So gamma L, or gamma N is a function of gamma L. And when will it be equal to 1? Then let's equate gamma N to 1, the magnitude of that. Okay, uh, solving for your uh, LCD, you put S11 above. That's S11 minus S11, S22, gamma L plus S12, S21, gamma L, magnitude equal to 1. Okay, that's what you see here. And uh, if we factor out gamma L, your uh, equation inside becomes this minus this, which will be delta. And that's what you see here. And you uh, cross multiply this to the other side, you get this one. Squaring both sides and simplifying, we obtain an equation that looks like this. Okay. So simplifying that, we can identify a center and a radius. Okay, so this is an equation of a circle with center and radius. Recall that gamma L right here is in polar form. So this must be a shift in a center. So a shift in from the origin. And this must be the radius of that shift. Oops. There you go. So this is the load stability condition. The source stability has uh, a similar yeah, a similar equations. So this will be your load stability circle, source stability circle. So as I've said, they have similar equations as you see here. Okay. So how do we plot this stability circle on the Smith chart? So at the bottom of a Smith chart file, you'll see a ruler. Okay. And one axis refers to the reflection coefficient magnitude. If let's say the magnitude of the center is equal to 0.7, then you'll use this length from 0 to 0 0.7 right here. This length will now represent this, the magnitude of the center. Okay. So that's what it says in this slide. And if, if it's 0 0.7, then you'll use this circle right here, somewhere here, somewhere near 0 0.75. Now to get the angle, so we get the angle of C, let's say it's 45 degrees, then you will use the edges of your Smith chart. It has an information about the angle, so you don't need any protractor. So it's 45 degrees, maybe it's right here, somewhere here. Okay? And where this line intersects with your circle, this is where you locate the center of your stability circle. And the radius can be measured again here. Let's say the radius is uh, 0 0.1. So it's this length right here. You use this length. You put your uh, the needle of your compass here. Okay? And let's say this is 0 0.1. Then you draw a circle around that center. And this is now your stability circle. I should have used a different colored pen, but yeah, that's what we have. All right. So this circle represents the values of gamma L or gamma S that will make the magnitude of gamma in or gamma out, for that matter, equal to 1. And you want it to be less than 1. For it to be less than 1, it depends on your S11 and S22. Okay. 
so uh, that's what I am saying earlier here. Let's skip that. Okay. So uh, the stability circle, what the previous slides say, if your uh, S11 is less than 1, gamma n less than 1 is found outside, oops, outside the stability circle. So in this case, if this is your stability circle right here, outside that, that's the stable region. Okay, that's the region when gamma n is less than 1. Okay? So, if S11, the magnitude of S11 is greater than 1, then uh, that means your uh, stable region will be inside, inside the stability circle and inside the gamma equal to 1 circle. And the gamma equal to 1 circle is this larger circle right here. So the intersection between them, that is the stable region. So this, uh, it's also the same for gamma out for S22. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, it's the same for uh, gamma S and S22, gamma L to S11. Okay. So another way to check if your transistor is unconditionally stable without using circles. You use the K-delta criterion and the mu stability criterion. The K-delta stability has this equation. If this K, which is equal to this, is greater than 1, and its corresponding delta is less than 1, then we can say that the transistor is unconditionally stable. Okay. However, uh, it just only tells us if it's unconditionally stable or not. Binary. It's either unconditionally stable or potentially uh, unstable. It does not give what uh, we say relative stability of our amplifier. And that's what the mu stability criteria, criteria gives us. The mu stability criterion is equal to this. And if mu is larger, then we have better stability. Okay? So, there you go. If, just a note, if S12 is equal to 0, then mu approaches infinity. Okay? So, the first step always for your amplifier, after you have chosen a transistor, you have to check its stability. If it's potentially unstable at a certain load, then maybe you can't use it for some applications. Yeah. If your device is unconditionally stable, according to the K delta, no need to plot stability circles. If you are comparing transistors and you find all of them to be potentially unstable, then you use the mu criteria to compare what transistor you will use. Okay. Now, uh, once you have done that, you need to plot the stability circles, assuming that they are potentially unstable, and determine the stable region. And you would want to, your transistor to operate in that region. A larger stability uh, region would mean that uh, your transistor is better. Okay. For example, let's say you can only use this transistor. And at 1.9 gigahertz, this is the S parameters based on the data sheet. We want to determine the stability of this transistor. So first you use the K delta. Using the K delta, you'll see that magnitude of delta is less than 1, then that's good. However, K is less than 1, that's bad. That means it's potentially unstable. And we verify that using the mu test. Well, it means mu is less than 1 again points to potential instability and let's check the stability circles this is cl this is cs and rs so load stability and source stability so you just use the formulas to get these values the centers will be complex numbers 
represents a point in the uh, Smith chart. And these two will be the radii, radii of the load and star circles. So your input output stability rather has a magnitude uh, 1.59. So that would be from here, this is the point, this length is equal to 1. So it's greater than that, somewhere here. So that's your center, and the radius is 0 0.915. So it's very large, so somewhere right here. Okay, and you draw a circle from there, you get this circle, and this is your output stability circle. Since S11 is less than 1, then you need to operate outside the stability circle, which is somewhere here. Same is true with uh, your CS right here is 1.09, so you'll find it slightly outside the border of your Smith chart, which is right here. And its radius is 0 0.205, so it's a smaller circle compared to your output stability circle. Since S22 is less than 1, then you'd want to operate outside that. So the operating region, so let me just clean that. So the operating region is right here. So you don't want to operate here. No, cannot operate there because your amplifier will become unstable in that region. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for listening. See you next meeting.